Hi, my name is Nick Raboy, and in this tutorial, we're going to get familiar with the MongoDB query language, sometimes referred to as MQL. So in this particular tutorial, we're going to see how to insert, update, read, and delete documents using the query language that's supported in the various language-specific drivers, so Node.js, Go, and any other supported driver, the MongoDB shell, the MongoDB Visual Studio Code extension, Compass, Atlas, various other tooling. So this is a common query language that's used all over MongoDB. Now, in this particular tutorial, our focus is going to be on MongoDB Atlas, as well as the Visual Studio Code MongoDB extension. Now, if you're using MongoDB Enterprise Edition, Community Edition, some other tool such as Compass, that's perfectly fine as everything will carry over to those platforms as well. Now you'll notice that up on my screen, I do have MongoDB Atlas loaded. So this is my pre-made cluster. And what we're gonna do is we're going to create a new database and a new collection to work with for this particular example. So let's go ahead and click on collections. So you'll notice that I do already have a list of databases and collections inside of my cluster. We're going to ignore those for this particular tutorial and we're gonna create our own. So I'm gonna click on create database and what I'm going to do is I'm going to type in game example. For this particular example, we're going to be going over maybe game related data. So maybe you are developing a game, you need a user profile store, so something to store information about your player. And this is an example that we're going to use. Now, by no means is this going to be a thorough example. This is a getting started tutorial. And the purpose is just to get you familiar and comfortable using various MongoDB query language operators. So the database name is called game example for the collection name. Let's go ahead and call it player. So this is maybe user profile data, player data. You can use your imagination and we're going to say create. Now, if you look in the list, we'll see game example and we'll see player and it will be empty as of now because we have no data. So our next step is, well, we want to start writing queries that will allow us to insert and work with our data. So if I open up Visual Studio Code, you'll notice that I have this JSON object up on the screen. So this is going to be a sample set of our data that will exist inside of that player collection. So for example, it has information such as the ID, which in this case is human readable. We have a name, we have some statistics, which is an object, and we have achievements, which is an array of objects. Now, the reason why we have an array of objects or even a nested object within our document is it gives us a more exciting example to use when querying our data with MQL because it'll, it'll make our queries a little more complex and realistic. So because we're going to be using Visual Studio Code to work with our MongoDB data, let's go ahead and make sure that we have the MongoDB extension downloaded. So if you click on file within Visual Studio Code, and if you go down to preferences and then extensions, what you can do is you can search for MongoDB. When you click on that first result, MongoDB for Visual Studio Code, make sure that it is MongoDB as the publisher and go ahead and download it. Once it's downloaded, what we can do is we can open up the MongoDB Playground, the MongoDB Explorer, various utilities that has to do with MongoDB directly inside of Visual Studio Code. To do that, there's numerous ways that you can, you can approach it. The way that we're going to be doing it is we're going to be using the Visual Studio Code command palette. To access it, you can use Control-Shift-P and then type in Show MongoDB. And you'll notice that I do have a few connections available to me already. If you want to add a new connection, you can either do that manually and type in your cluster information, or you can add a MongoDB connection string similar to how you would in a Node.js or similar application. And to get that connection string, if we went back into MongoDB Atlas and we clicked on clusters, what we can do is we can click on connect and we can click on connect your application. And this string right here is the connection URL that you would want to use. Now you would want to replace the DB name with that that we created, which would be game example. And you'd also want to use a username and password for your particular application. And the username and password can be defined inside of the database access portion of MongoDB Atlas. 
So I already do have connection information established, and the goal of this tutorial is not to get you familiar with the Visual Studio Code extension, but more with the MongoDB query language. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to connect to my cluster by double clicking it. It's now connected. What we can do is we can create a new playground, and this is specific to the Visual Studio Code extension, the experience that you'll receive in other tools such as the MongoDB shell, Compass, etc. It's going to be slightly different, but the queries will be the same. Let's go ahead and create a new playground. So this is an example playground that we can run directly inside of Visual Studio Code, and it will interact with MongoDB, the MongoDB cluster and database and collection that we provided. So let's go ahead and make some changes. I'm going to remove the comments and I'm going to choose to use game example because that's the name of our database. And I'm going to erase the rest. We're going to work our way forward. Now to get us familiar with the various operations that we can use, it makes sense to go at it with a CRUD type approach, create, retrieve, update, delete. Now we have no data in our MongoDB database right now, no data in our collection. So the first stage, which would be C for create, it makes sense to actually create some data. So let's go ahead and give it a try. Let's go ahead and type in DB dot player dot insert one. Now the insert one command will create a single document within MongoDB as long as the ID is unique. So let's go ahead and copy that JSON object that we see inside of this particular file. So our data model, this is going to be kind of the basis for our example. Let's just go ahead and copy it. It's, it's perfectly acceptable JSON and I'm going to paste it in and I believe I copied the brackets as well. So in regard to the ID, so the ID has to be unique. What we can do is we can either provide an ID. In this case, we've provided a string of Enra boy, but if we've chosen to left it blank, MongoDB will create an ID for us. So we have that option. If MongoDB creates it for us, it will be unique. Otherwise, if we define our own IDs, it has to be unique. Otherwise, we'll receive an error as a result. So let's go ahead and try to execute this. I'm going to click the play button within Visual Studio Code, and it will use our game example, and then it'll issue this insert one command. So DB being game example, player being our collection name, and then insert one being the operator. So I'm going to hit play. It says acknowledge true, inserted ID, and Raboy. So it, it gave us the ID back that we had just inserted. Now, if we go into MongoDB Atlas and we click on collections, we can click on game example and then player, and we should see that document in front of us. So we have the full document, exactly how we had created it inside of our insert one operation, except for now it's formatted in a way that's part of the MongoDB Atlas user experience. So we have data, it's, it's just one document, but we have data to work with now for this particular example. So let's move on to the next step. Let's go ahead and say that we want to retrieve that data directly inside of Visual Studio Code. And like I've said, and I wanna reiterate this, I can use these commands within the MongoDB shell. I can use the command right here with minor edits to the actual uh, prefix here inside of the MongoDB drivers. So Node.js, Go, Rust, etc., cetera. Uh, and we'll get the same experience. So I'm gonna comment out this insert one. We already have data inserted, but I am gonna leave the use game example because we need to define which database we want to use in our cluster, which we're currently connected to. Next up, what I can say is I can say db.player.find, and I'm gonna pass in an empty object and I'm gonna say run. You'll notice that as results, I got an array of documents, an array of objects, even though that I only have one document inside of my collection. Because I'm using an empty object, that means that my filter is essentially give me all objects that exist in that collection. If I wanted to be specific, I would add filter criteria to this object and it would provide me only matches based on that criteria. So for example, let's go ahead and say that I only want documents where the name is Nick Raboy. So what I can do is I can change this find operation. I can pass in the field that I want to filter on and I can say Nick Raboy and I can run it. 
Now, as a result, I still got an array back because you know what? There could be more than one document where the name is Nick Raboy. If I wanted to, I can make an error here, maybe Nick Raboy one. And because this is called an equality filter, it has to equal, the field has to equal this value. We should end up with no results back. So we have an empty array because there were no documents returned. Now, even though that we did a find and we were trying to search for multiple documents, what we could also do is we could do a find one. And what that does is it'll return the first document that matches the filter criteria. So if I did name Nick Raboy and I clicked go, instead of returning an array, I now have a single object, the first object that came back in that particular query. Likewise, inside of the insert one that we saw previously, if I wanted to insert numerous documents at a time, I could easily provide an array of objects and each object inside of that array, as long as the ID is unique, would be inserted into MongoDB. Now let's look at another example. So this is an equality filter. Like I said, the name field in this circumstance, because it's just a colon followed by a string, the name has to equal Nick Raboy. But what if we wanted to change it up a bit? What if we wanted all documents where maybe the wins, so we have wins inside of stats, what if we wanted to find all documents that have a win that's greater than six or greater than five or greater than something or less than? What we can do is we can use a range filter on this particular query. So what would that look like? Let me comment this out so that way we can always refer back to it. And let's do another find operation. Let's go ahead and say db.player.find and let's provide a more complex filter. So for this particular filter, let's go ahead and say stats. Even though this is an object, we can still filter on the child fields. We can do that by using what's called dot notation. We can say stats.wins and this is where we want to get into the range filter. So we can use an object and we can use the greater than operator. So the operator starts with a dollar sign. And let's say that the wins has to be greater than six. Now, we don't have any documents in our collection where the wins is greater than six, so we shouldn't get any results back. So let's go ahead and give it a try. Now we have an empty array, but let's change that. Let's go ahead and say that we want the wins to be greater than three. We're gonna hit play and we have our results once again. Still, rather simplistic, we have one particular filter criteria for this find operation. So let's complicate it a little more. Let's go ahead and add another filter criteria. So what we're gonna say is we're gonna say comma, this time around, maybe we want the wins to be greater than three, but the losses to be less than five. So we can say stats.losses, and we're gonna use the same kind of operator. This time it's going to be a less than, and we're gonna say less than five. And we're gonna play. So this was not valid in the sense that we don't have any data where the wins are greater than three, but the losses are still less than five because our losses for our only piece of data in this collection is 10. So let's go ahead and change it. Let's go ahead and say the losses are less than maybe 15. So we have results. So this was an example of not only using range filters, but more than one filter criteria within a find operation. And this same filter criteria could be used in a find one if you wanted to. Likewise, you can mix and match. You can have these filter operators such as greater than, and you can even use the equality filter on top of that as well. So for example, I could also do name Nick Raboy, and that would still be valid because if I ran it, all the information matches. So let's move on. That was an example of inserting data using the insert one operator and then finding data using various filters and the find and find one. So the next step is the U in CRUD. So this would be update. So we've created data. We've read data from our collection. Now let's say we want to change fields within our documents in that collection. So what we can do is we can say db.player.update and we can choose either to say update one for one document or update many. Let's go ahead and say update many for this example. So update many or update one, basically you have two objects. The first object represents our filter. So this is the same filter that you would see in the find one and find operations. So we're filtering for particular documents that we want to edit. So let's go ahead and say that the filter is going to be on the ID 
and the ID has to be Enra Boy. So because ID is unique, there will only be a maximum of one particular document that gets updated as long as the ID matches Enra Boy. The next part is, well, what do we want to do once we've found a match? So there's various operators that you can use in MongoDB when it comes to updating. What we're going to do is we're going to update based on the set operator. So the set operator will set any field to what we particularly choose. So for example, we'll say set and we'll provide an object and we'll provide whatever we want to change based on the match. So in this case, let's go ahead and change name to be Nicholas Raboy. Now this is my full name. So if there's a match, and for this particular example, there should be because our only document has an ID of nRaboy, we're going to do a set operation and we're going to set the name field to be Nicholas Raboy. So let's go ahead and give it a shot. So we ran it and you'll notice that we have a match count of one. So there was one match and one document modified. If I comment this out and I uncomment the find one and I change it, to be ID instead of name, and I change the ID to be nRaboy, I'm gonna run it, and you'll notice that the result for name is Nicholas Raboy instead of Nick Raboy. Now, if I scroll back to our update many, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna uncomment this update many, and I'm gonna explain something. So because we use the set operator, we are setting the name field, but the name field doesn't necessarily have to exist. So for example, if name did not exist, it would be added to the particular document that matched. Otherwise, since it did exist, what we did is we replaced that particular field. There are other operators. So for example, if we wanted to add a new item to this achievements array, we could use, for example, the push operator, or we could use the add to set operator both of which would add to this array, but they do slightly different things. Whereas the add to set would be concerned about whether or not the object is unique and push adds it to the end of the array, regardless on if it's unique or not. Now there are plenty of other operators when it comes to update, you'll have to refer to the documentation to choose whatever makes the most sense for your particular MongoDB query language needs. In addition to update many and update one, there's also a replace function. So replace is in the similar territory as update, but instead of updating a particular field or fields uh, based on whatever was met inside of the filter criteria, if a document was matched in that filter criteria, the entire document will re be replaced with whatever you had set in the next part. So just remember, update will update only what you define, whereas replace will replace the entire document. So in, if you decide to do the same thing, but instead of update, you say place one, we're also going to remove this particular operator because we're not setting a document. We're replacing the entire document. So I'm going to remove it and we're going to run it. And this time around, if I comment out this replace one and we just strictly do a find one, well, all of our other fields are gone because we did a replace of the document. We didn't, we didn't set any fields. We didn't add anything to an array. We didn't do any kind of other operation. We replaced the entire document with what was provided. So just note that when you're working with replace and update. All right, so let's go ahead and add our document back. But before we do that, maybe we want to delete our old document rather than doing a replace with this entire insert one JSON object. So this is a perfect example of where we would do the D in CRUD. So D for delete. Let's go ahead and give it a try. What we're going to say is we're going to say DB dot player dot remove, and we're going to provide it a filter. So this is the same filter that we could use in find update replace. So for this particular filter, I'm going to say ID because this is the particular document we want to remove. And I'm going to say and reboy and I'm going to run it. You'll notice that it spit out a lot of results for us, but if we comment this out and we try to do a find again, there shouldn't be any data coming back. See, we have null because when we do this find one based on the ID, well, there is no document based on that ID. And we can confirm that within MongoDB Atlas by refreshing our collection. So you'll notice that there are zero results 
when we did our refresh. So let's go back into Visual Studio Code. Let's go ahead and add our document back so that way we can actually do our find operation. Now I am leaving both in here, but I'm gonna make sure that the remove was commented out. So inside of Visual Studio Code, it'll use the game example database, it'll insert a document, and then it'll do a find. So when we hit that play button in Visual Studio Code with the MongoDB extension, it's going to run everything inside of our playground. So I'm gonna hit run. And you'll notice that our document is back. So we just saw a few examples when it comes to the MongoDB query language, often referred to as MQL. We saw to do basic CRUD operations. So create, retrieve, update, delete. For the update, we also saw the replace. And we saw a few of the various options when it came to operators that could be used for, say for example, the find or the update. There are a ton of other operators that you can choose from. I highly recommend that you go to the documentation to look at what each operator does. So that way you can use it in your own application examples. Now, I just wanna reiterate that even though I used MongoDB Atlas and Visual Studio Code with the MongoDB extension, you could do the same stuff with your on-premise solution of MongoDB, whether that be Enterprise Edition or Community Edition, and you don't need to be using Visual Studio Code to run MQL. So MQL will remain consistent between your languages, so between your platforms as well. So you can use Visual Studio Code, you can use the MongoDB shell, you can use Compass, you can use any of the language drivers, there's other tools that exist as well. You're gonna get that same experience with a different kind of user experience. So it's totally up to you on how you want to use MQL. It's very powerful and there's a lot to be learned, but this again was just a very basic quick start to get you through the door when it comes to running MongoDB queries.